In today's video, my goal is to simplify the pentose phosphate pathway. If you do find this video useful, please leave a like or a comment because it really does help the channel to grow. To start off the video, I'm sure everyone who's watching this video knows what DNA and RNA are. They're both essential for any living organism, but part of the, the makeup of DNA and RNA is that it contains a sugar molecule. That's one of the components. Now, during the process of respiration, this is where we're breaking down glucose to make energy. There's an alternative branch which branches off from this process of glycolysis to make the sugars that are inside the DNA and RNA. So a separate branch from glycolysis makes these sugars. This separate pathway is known as the pentose phosphate pathway. The pentose phosphate pathway occurs in the cytosol of the cell and it doesn't require any energy in the form of ATP. And there's no energy that's produced in the process. So let's look at the general process of respiration first. So we have glucose, which is a six carbon molecule. And then during the process of glycolysis, initially we have the glucose converted into glucose six phosphate. And this is done by the addition of a phosphate to the glucose. Now this glucose six phosphate molecule is essential for the pentose phosphate pathway. Now you have to remember that glucose is a six carbon molecule glucose 6 phosphate is still also a 6 carbon molecule. The sugar that's in DNA and RNA is a 5 carbon molecule. So it makes sense that in this process, we need to end up with a 5 carbon molecule to make the sugar that's in DNA and RNA. Let's talk about the two phases of the pentose phosphate pathway because that will make it clear. We first have the oxidative phase and then secondly we have the non-oxidative phase. In the first oxidative phase, oxidation basically means uh, you break down a molecule and it loses electrons. The oxidative phase has two irreversible steps so you can't go back on these steps. So first, this glucose 6-phosphate is oxidized to form lactone. Water and NADP plus are used in this reaction. We get the formation of 6-phosphogluconate and NADPH from this reaction. Next, a carbon is removed from the 6-phosphogluconate and carbon dioxide is released. The electrons which are released from the reaction is used to reduce this NADP plus back to NADPH. So now, if you look at the diagram here, you can see we're left with this 5-carbon molecule called ribulose 5-phosphate. So that's the oxidative phase done. Now we're going to move on to the non-oxidative phase. The key thing here is that in this phase, the reactions are reversible, so you can always go back to what you started with. And what happens in the non-oxidative phase is we have this ribulose 5-phosphate, and that can be converted into ribose 5-phosphate, which is the sugar that's used to make up the DNA and RNA. We've made the sugar that we need. So that happens in the first step of the non-oxidative phase. Now, in the rest of the non-oxidative phase, there's quite a few options that the molecule can go down depending on what the cell needs. Ribose 5-phosphate, it can combine with another ribose phosphate and form a 10-carbon molecule. If there's excess of ribose 5-phosphate, it's not needed to make DNA and RNA. It can just be converted into other sugars used by the cell for metabolism. It sounds complicated, but there's a whole host of different molecules being made here. So this 10 carbon molecule, it can be converted into a 3 carbon molecule and a 7 carbon molecule. This 3 carbon molecule can be used in glycolysis. So this can go off and join the stages of glycolysis. And actually, if there is an urgent need to make ribose 5-phosphate, a 3 carbon molecule from the glycolysis phase can also come back and can go straight into this non-oxidative phase because all these reactions here they're interchangeable and uh, these reactions are all reversible. So depending on what the cell needs, these molecules can be converted back and forth. Yeah, this three carbon molecule can be used interchangeably. It can be shipped over from the glycolysis process to make the ribose 5-phosphate if there's a need. The seven carbon and the three carbon molecule can also interconvert again and make a four carbon and a six carbon molecule. This four carbon molecule can be used as a precursor to make amino acids. Uh, the six carbon molecule can be used in glycolysis. So yeah, the non-oxidative phase, to be honest, sounds a lot more complicated than it is. You just have to remember that the oxidative phase is irreversible. And in the non-oxidative phase, that's where we get the ribose 5-phosphate, which is used to make the sugar in DNA and RNA. But then if there's excess, then that 5-carbon molecule can be used to make other stuff. So it's converted into other molecules for amino acids, for respiration. It all depends on what the cell needs.